Hi there! In this fourth video in the Advanced Photoshop series, I'm going to show you how to work with the Shadow and Highlight feature and how to do a similar thing using the Curves Edit so that you compress the dynamic range. Why would you want to compress the dynamic range? Well, sometimes when you take a picture, there's too much of a range in brightness between the darks and the lights. And ultimately, you end up getting a lot of information in the shadow region and a lot of information in the highlight region and not too much in the mid-range. And this is a limitation of a lot of cameras, even film cameras at times. And it can leave you with pictures that don't look too natural. I mean, in this case, I have a blown out sky. It doesn't look like it's... It doesn't look that good, basically. Sadly. Um, well, what you can try and do is take some of the information in the highlights and push it down into the mid-tones. You're going to lose a little bit of pop. It's not going to look as 3D-ish, but on the plus side, it'll look more uniform, and sometimes that can be better. That can sometimes be a lot better. Uh, these effects aren't used that often, but when they are, they come in very helpful. Well, since I want to do two effects, and I want to compare each effect, I have to have a way to actually have both effects open at the same time and switch quickly between them so I can compare them. A very nice feature of Photoshop is working with layers. Over in my right bottom corner, I have my layers window open. And usually when you open up a picture, you get just one layer, your basic picture. Well, I'm actually able to duplicate this layer. And then I can do one effect on one layer, another effect on another layer, and quickly switch back and forth. And so that's what I want to do. Okay, so I have my layer here. I'm going to right click it, and I'm going to click Duplicate Layer. It asked me to give it a name, so I'm going to name this one Curves. Click OK. And now I have two layers. The eye icon shows me I'm viewing the layer, and the paintbrush icon shows me that's the layer at the moment that I would edit. Well, I don't I want to work with the bottom layer at first, so I'm going to get rid of the eye icon on the curves layer. So I click that off. And now I select the bottom layer so that this is the one I'm editing. Very good. Okay, so let's start working with this picture. Well, let's do a shadow and highlight edit. So I go to Image, Adjustments, Shadow and Highlight. It brings up this nice dialog box with a lot of options. I've set these options so I get very consistent results. For the shadows, I have the tonal width at 45% and the radius at 2500 pixels. For the highlights, I have the tonal width at 82% and the radius at 170 pixels. For all of the adjustments below, I have them at their default values. And basically, the only things I ever change are the shadow amount and the highlight amount. Okay, so let me actually unpreview the image right now. That's what it started like. And let me preview the basic effect. Already better. And let me just fiddle around with the highlights. Okay, maybe about there looks good. Let me fiddle around with the shadows. Okay, maybe about there. Now let me unpreview that. Massive difference. Preview it. It's brought the sky more in line with the midtones. And so now it doesn't look so it doesn't look so contrasty to begin with, but it looks more natural to me. And you can also see it being previewed in the histogram. So this peak in the highlights has now been pushed down here. And a similar thing has happened to the shadows. Some of it's been pushed a little bit more towards the midtones. 
Well, I like this, so I'm going to click OK. And there you go. There's a simple shadow and highlight edit. Well, now I want to try and do a similar effect using curves. So I go back to my Layers window, and I'm going to now select the Curves layer. So now that's the one I'm viewing, and that's the one I'm editing. And we're back to the original image, essentially. Well, let's try it. So let's go to Image, Adjustments, Curves. And now I want to pull down the midtones a little bit. Good. And now I have to suppress the highlights. I have to pull them down into the mid range. So I do this. Okay. And now let me fool around with the shadow region a bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let me unpreview that. Preview it. Well, it's working on the sky, but sadly I've lost saturation in the library color. I'm going to actually pull down the midtones a bit more. Okay, that looks good right about there. Unpreview it. Preview it. The sky is more in line with the rest of the image, but sadly the library is still not as saturated. Well, it's not ideal, but we can actually boost up the saturation. So if I go to Image, Adjustments, Hue and Saturation, I can bump up saturation. Maybe I'll put it up to plus 10. Unpreview it, preview it a little bit of an effect. It might not be noticeable in this video, but it is a little bit. It's increased the saturation a bit. So I'll click OK. And there, there's the other effect done. Now let's compare the two. Well, it's very simple. All I have to do is switch between these layers, which one I'm viewing. So at the moment, I'm viewing the curve layer. And if I uncheck that eye icon, I'll be viewing the background layer. So right now, this is the curve edit. And let me go to the shadow and highlight edit. So I unclick the eye. Big difference. Let me go back and forth between them a bit. That's the curve. This is the shadow and highlight. Well, which one do I like? That's a tough call. I kind of like the shadow and highlight edit a little bit better. A little bit better. Um, it's kept the color in the sky a little bit better, and it's kept the contrast in the library a lot better. But you can see these are two different effects that have achieved a similar result by making the sky a little bit more in line with the rest of the image. Now because this was a pretty crappy image to begin with, the effect doesn't look too spectacular. But if the image was a lot better, this effect could have really made an image very, very strong. It does lose a little bit of the pop factor, but it can really make up for it in making the whole image look unified. Well, there you go. Two different effects that achieved a similar result. I like the shadow and highlight feature because it was simple to use. It didn't mess with the saturations or the colors. And it was a seamless effect. I don't use it that often, but it comes in very handy. Okay, I hope this was helpful in showing you how to compress dynamic range more into the midtones to make it more uniform. Hope it was helpful.